Okay, here I am again. Today is another new day, and I have another new scripture for you. But it's not new to us. It's in God's Word, the Bible, alone. And that is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3. For God has given to every man the measure of faith. So what does that mean for me, and what does that mean for you? Well, it means this. If we don't have faith first in our heart to believe in God, we don't have faith in anything in our life at all. Now that, to me, it's kind of like pathetic. But at the same time, it's real in the reality of who we are and who we must be with God alone. He is Jesus. His name has been Jesus for infinity. And His Heavenly Father, God, Jehovah, plus the holiness of who He is and who He was, the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, is and was God Himself in the flesh. He did die on the cross for the world's sins. And it says in the Bible, he has the power to raise himself up from the dead. And he did it. He raised himself from the dead with God Jehovah's help and the holiness of who he is, the Holy Spirit. Now, if I were to imagine what it was like to just stand there, being in the presence of all of his disciples and many hundreds of people standing around him, when he started talking about the drinking of his blood and the eating of his flesh for eternal life and the salvation of who he is and was as some prophet and somewhat he was saying that he was in likeness of his heavenly father God Jehovah who was their God at the time alone so he's explaining something to them that was not an awareness of who he was was God as God but instead of telling them straight up that I'm talking about wine and bread and the holiness of his love is in the bread alone that he's gonna send us through the eating of bread, which is kind of, it's like the manna that God, Jehovah, and Jesus sent his people in Israel when they were in the desert to eat. And the wine itself was in resemblance to his blood, but not necessarily drinking his blood, of course, not at all. But he was trying to explain about who he was as the Son of God, the Christ, the one that was sent, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, to be crucified, and his life given on the cross for our sins, that he must die and raise himself from the dead on the third day. And he did that. So here are all of these people listening to his story about the drinking of his blood, the eating of his flesh, and the consumption about who he was as somewhat still a man in the presence and people's hearts and minds and eyesight as he's standing there saying all these things. He wasn't in God likeness at all to them. He was just a man standing there talking about all of these things and heaven and eternal life and finally at the very end of his sermon or his talk wherever he was probably on a beach standing on a boat as he usually was so he could see many many people and they could hear him and see him as best they could in those days they didn't have a stage or a microphone so he did the best he could so what happened was after he said all of those things about the drinking of his blood and the eating of his flesh and eternal life through him and coming to the Father no other way but through him, through his death and resurrection from the dead on the third day, many, many people turned around and walked away from him in the crowd of people and also including his disciples there. And God, Jesus is telling me there was probably about 50 to maybe 60 plus people there in that crowd who really worshiped him and developed a pride and an enjoyment and a joy in their life and in their heart to be with him all the time and always at least that's what they were thinking but when they heard that story these things that had never been heard before because the New Testament and the Old Testament was just like old news to them but it had not been written in a Bible formation yet so can you imagine what it was like for Jesus to stand there, right there in front of them, just kind of like burying himself, knowing that he was God, but he couldn't quite say it, not yet. Because God Jehovah said, wait, my son, I have better things to teach them first before we get to that, and we'll get to that later. So he waited, and he told him the best story that only God could tell, who was himself but they didn't know that for sure they knew him as God's son the Christ but they still could not put it all together who could who could imagine all of that coming together in God's Word right now called the Bible it's called faith and faith is to believe in God's Word but first of all 
It's faith in our hearts that God has given us already when he created each and every one of us. The faith is the living life and the word and the trust that we have in our hearts alone for him alone as God alone. That to me is the measure of faith alone for me alone to be with God alone as him being alone God first and then him being God alone in my life my God my creator my savior and now my very best friend this can all happen for you too just remember this Romans 12 3 for God has given to every man the measure of faith it's only going to get better from here folks only better from here just accept him as your God and Savior and Jesus Christ alone, along with great God Jehovah and the Holy Spirit. Remember, they are still one God alone, but yet three separate in the presence as one God alone still. That's it for now. Remember Romans 12, 3. There is no excuse in God's presence on Judgment Day for any of us to say that I was never introduced to God and to believe in God. Well, that's not true. Romans 12, 3 says it all. For God has given to each man the measure of faith. And it's as simple as that. Which means you choose with your will to have faith in God, to believe in him and to worship him throughout infinity or not. It's your choice. What do you choose? I choose eternity with my God and Savior Jesus Christ who is God, of God first alone with great God Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are the Holy Spirit one but yet separate in the presence of one God alone God bless have a great day talk to you soon